If you struggle with time management or keep it on top of multiple projects at the same time, this week's Tuesday Tech Tips might just be your answer. Today we'll be exploring Kanban boards, a lean visual scheduling system developed by the Toyota Motor Corporation that could transform the way you work. So if you're ready, let's jump in. I've been using Kanbans for about five years now and they've revolutionized how I manage my time and multiple projects. They're great when you've got a process of steps you need to follow. We'll be organizing our Kanbans with Kanban Flow, but before we begin working with the tool, it's worth having a look at what a Kanban board is. When I started using Kanbans, I was using a whiteboard with columns drawn on it. With a Kanban, each column or swim lane represents a milestone in the project. You can have as many or as few stages as the project dictates. I then group my projects into different coloured post-it notes, blue for my day-to-day -day teaching tasks, pink for a student residential to Barcelona, and yellow for blended learning projects. Your first column is your backlog. This is basically your to-do list for each project. The tasks at the top should have the highest value or impact. Each task then flows through the board until it's completed. The idea is not to multitask, but to stay with each task until there's a stopping point. Using a whiteboard served its purpose, but I had to be at my workplace to see the board and the task that I was working on. Kanban Flow, however, is a cloud-based app which means you can take your board with you wherever you go and you get to collaborate on the boards with your team. Head over to kanbanflow.com and sign up for an account and you'll receive an email with a verification code. Once you've signed up, you're brought to your first board. Here you can see each column, also known as a bin. We've got a to-do, do today, in progress and done. In the to-do column, we've got individual tasks and these are color-coded for each project you're working on. You can see here that there's a list icon Click that and you'll see a list of subtasks for that particular task in your to-do list. And with the next task, you can see that you can add descriptions and comments to tasks, which is great if you're working on a team board. To invite members to a board, click on the plus sign on the members tab and then invite by email. You can change your own avatar by clicking on your account icon in the top right corner and select account settings. I would then change the avatar to my initials or a photo. That way it's obvious who's who in my team. So as an item in our to-do stack progresses, we move it across the board by clicking and dragging. To complete a subtask, just click in the checkbox. And when you've completed all subtasks, drag the task to the done column and begin working on the next task. You create a task by clicking the plus sign in the column. You can change the color, name the task, add members to the task, add labels and descriptions, add a due date and time estimates. To add a subtask from here, click the save and open details button and click the add button. then click the X to close. You can see the new task here. You can limit the number of tasks that can be in progress at any one time. You can see here that there's a 0 out of 3 displayed. So if we drag more than 3 items into the progress bin, you see a red warning sign appear at the top. You can change this by clicking on the pencil icon and clicking the 3 buttons at the top of the column and choosing Edit. The Work in Progress Limit or WIP Limit is here. Save your changes and then click Done. To create a new board, go up to the Boards tab on the left and click the Create Board button. Name the board. Next, you can change the columns. I'm going to make this my daily tasks. I like to organise my tasks by urgency and importance, with A, B and C tasks. I'll also add a waiting column for any pause in the tasks that are reliant on other people coming back to me, such as approval from another department. And I'll add another column for my completed items. When you've done that, click Next and from here you can change the work in progress limits for each column or leave them blank if you don't want any limits. Click Next and add any members to the board if you're collaborating on this board with other people. And then click Create Board. And there you go, your board's created. It really is that simple to use. The most difficult part is knowing what layout to use for your Kanban board. I'll show you how I've been using Kanban Flow with my projects. The first board I use is a home board that I share with my wife. You can see a couple of projects we've got on the go. Organising a holiday to the Isle of Wight, painting our garage and replacing our boiler with a simple to do, do today, in progress and done columns. I also work as a wedding caricaturist and you can see the actions I've got in here, still using a simple process. Now the next board I'll show you is the process we work through to create online SCORM learning packages. This includes each stage of the process, 
So if you're working in a team, we can see each project and where it is in that process. There's lots of steps from writing the script to getting a draft sample signed off by the subject matter expert and marketing all the way to done. So as you can see, Kanban Flow is a great way to organize your projects and tasks, and it gives you a visual overview of your progress. Give it a try, and I'll see you next week for another Tuesday Tech Tip.